Hello, I'm DJ and you saw my shoulder for a second there. I'm today I'm going I told you in like a different video. I'm gonna read How to Train a uh, Train Your Dragon or this book. Here's our protagonist. Hiccup or <laughs> Hiccup and the Sword Endeavor. Endeavor. <laughs> Now, there's going to be some. Here are the characters. <laughs> all these. Yeah, all the characters. Try to read them all. <laughs> ah. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna start. Ah. Oh. Chapter 1. An odd way to spend your birthday. At exactly 12 o'clock on the afternoon of his 12th birthday, Hiccup horrendous Haddock III, the hope and hear to the tribe of the Harry Hoogans, was standing shakily on the window narrow, a windy narrow window ledge, 300 feet up in the air. Hiccup was a rather ordinary looking boy for someone with such a long and impressive name. Smallish, thinnish, another bean with a bo of a boy of bright red hair that shot straight up as if it was surprised, and a face that nobody ever remembered. Alright, let me tell you. You probably remember that he's a brunette. It looks very different from the picture you saw. And, <laughs> and the dragon toothless is not what you expect. Well, <laughs> in the movie and show, his like his one of his feet is metal. I'll show you that soon. Well, I'm gonna pause the video and show you his foot from the movie. Okay. And now we're and now we're back. But how to train your dragon? Why everything looks so different? I had to go through a lot of stuff to get that picture, so it's five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. All right, after we were just going, all right, let's start. Oh my gosh, sorry about that. Let's start for when we started off. The window ledge that he was perched on belonged to a castle of terrifying size and spookiness. That sprawled like an ugly black monster on top of the gold shrieking cliffs of the Isle of Forget Me. Although the castle was known as the Meathead Public Library, it was not, in fact, open to the general public. This was back in Viking times when books were considered a highly dangerous civilizing influence. So they rounded up and kept locked up in the library under heavy armed guard. Entry to the library was strictly by invitation only. Hiccup had not been invited, which was why he was 300 feet up in the air and about to sneak in through an upstairs window. <coughs> <coughs> what he was making here was definitely a surprise visit. He really, really did not want anyone to know he was there. If Hiccup looked down, and he was trying very, very hard not to, he could see the tiny figures of hundreds of meathead warrior guards moving in the courtyard below. The sun glinting wickedly after metal tipped morphos, the driller dragons of long chains behind them. Hiccup knew that they only had to look up and they would have no hesitation at all to shooting on sight. <clears throat> Hiccup swallowed hard. He was getting the nerve up to climb through the broken window and into the library. But he didn't really want to do this either. Who knew what could be hidden in the dark maze of rooms? A labyrinth so huge that you will be lost in there for weeks without a soul ever finding you. Whatever else was in there, Hiccup knew that somewhere in that terrifying book, it, 
in that tough hunt book Warren Doe called the hairy scary librarian himself to help blind, half dumb guardian of the library. Master Swordman, mathematical genius and an all around scary individual, the hairy scary librarian showed no mercy to intruders. Pickup had heard him at Gallerians of the Tribe, boasting of how he finished off foolish warriors. He dared to try and find out the librarian's secrets with one slash of his sword, which he called his heart slicers. I croak them with me heart slicers, he would whisper with the firelight flickering in his undead eye. It unzips them from, from the goggles screens to the grub brushes. Then he would make a nasty swiping motion from his throat down to his belly button. Serves them right. Nobody borrows books from my library and tells them and lives to tell the tale. And if the hairy scary librarian was scary even on a social occasion, then you were sitting down at cozy campfire the rest of the tribe all comfortably settled around you. How much scarier was he still when he was doing his business, lurking like a spider around every corner of his spooky library, his heart slicers at the ready? Ah, uh, <coughs> sorry about that. If you, though, Many of you, some of you, or many of you might have read this. And you practically know the story. Don't give us spoiler words in the comments. For people who had it, read the story, please. Ow. Ah, if you don't, uh, if you don't, uh, let's just get on. Uh -huh. Particularly when, like Hiccup, you have to come to the library not just to stroll about, but to actually steal one of the precious books and take it home with you. At that moment, a small wild dragon happened to fly past the spot where Hiccup was perching. Hiccup followed it automatically with his eyes. That's what brought his squirrel serpent, he said to himself. As the little, little rat, Dragon sword being careless, with nothing to do and nowhere to go, into the bright blue sky, he thought to himself, What am I doing? This is my birthday for Thor's sake. I should be sitting at home enjoying myself instead of risking my neck feet and his feet up in the library doom. What am I doing? How did I get myself into this mess in the first place? Nothing could possibly be worse than this. <clears throat> oh, that that moment, Hiccup was so busy with his thought, and with watching the rest of Spotted Squirrel's Fin rolling through the air in the lazy arc, that he lost concentration, and his foot slipped on the crumbly edge of the window. With a smuzzled shriek, he fell to the edge. He fell off the edge entirely. Arms lay scrabbling wildly, with one flailing hand just caught onto the window ledge as he fell and held, leaving him hanging by one hand. Snuffy between him and the hard ground, but behind his feet a pure, clean air. <coughs> Hiccup screamed again. Down below in the battlements, the head of 400 meathead guards tipped up for the look. All 400 reached for the nerf balls, and floating up to Hiccup as he swung from, ledge, swung from the ledge of one hand came to the ominous sound of the drill dragons setting their drills a worrying. Ah, oh, that was the first chapter. I hope you liked it. Like and subscribe.